52. So I've got good news and bad news, Keefe said as Sylvany nuzzled his shoulder through the bars. Keefe hadn't come over the day before, and the high maintenance alicorn had clearly missed him. Which do you want first? Sylvie rubbed her temples. Might as well start with the bad and get it over with. She doubted it could be worse than what she was already dealing with. Elwyn had spent hours making her drink different elixirs and then flashing light in her eyes to see if they helped. When she'd felt like the headaches were going to break her brain, he'd finally had to admit defeat. And even though he'd promised he would figure it out, she wasn't holding her breath. The only relief was that he'd agreed to let her wait to tell Grady and Edeline until he had more information. No reason to tell anyone. Yet. Well, she prompted when Keith still hadn't said anything. I sort of had to tell my dad what we're doing. What? But before you freak out, don't worry. I didn't tell him anything important. Why did you have to tell him anything? I thought you were the king of lying to adults. I am, but there's only so much you can hide when you're dealing with an empath. Trust me, I would know. So I had to give him enough truth to hide the lies. Apparently, he heard us talking while we were in line to see the backers. And he cornered me about it, wanting me to know what we were up to. Sophie was too tired and frustrated to do anything other than sigh. Sheesh, will you relax? All I told him is that I was helping you with Sylvany because you were having a hard time and needed an empath skills. Then I loaded it up with all kinds of stuff about how much Glitterbutt loves me and how much you love having me around and all that truth sold him. Truth, she grumbled, rolling her eyes. So if it's not a big deal, why are you telling me? Well, you're cute when you're panicking for one thing. But also, he was super excited about this. I mean, I'm sure it's Syl because Sylvany is such a big deal, and he's imagining me getting special mention from the council when Sylvany is ready to be moved or something. But later that night, he gave me this. He pointed to the pin, clasping his cape around his shoulders. A circle, with two hands holding a candle, with an emerald flame. She'd seen the crest before on his Foxfire uniform. Wow, she said hoping he couldn't feel her surprise. What? Nothing. Keith laughed. Clearly you have no idea how to lie to an empath. What? Sophie bit her lip. It's nothing. I guess I just didn't realize you didn't have a sense in crest pin. Uh, you've met my father. You've seen what he's like. He's always told me I have to earn my place in the family. And I guess now I have. Sophie smiled. She'd been wondering why he was wearing a cape instead of his usual tunic and pants, and she couldn't blame him. She knew how much it had meant when Grady had given her the ruin crest, and she hadn't how it, and she hadn't had to spend a lifetime earning it. So was that the good news? Part of it. But the real good news is he told me I can spend as much time here as I want, so we can see even more of each other. Oh, great. Wow. Try not to be too enthusiastic there, Foster. He rumpled Sylvanie's mane. At least you're excited, aren't you, Glitterbutt? Keith, it's just, I don't even know where we're supposed to go from here. The only leads we have are in line, are a line in an old dwarven song about swans and a tiny piece of an erased memory that the black swan has specifically warned me not to investigate. Whoa, back the T-Rex up. The black swan con contacted you again and you didn't tell me? Sorry, I guess I forgot. She explained about the warning note and the piece of her old journal attached to it. Okay, first, I definitely want to know their trick for breaking into lockers. And second, uh, that's not a warning, that's a dare. Now we know they still have the pages, so we just have to figure out a way to steal them back. It's not that easy, Keith. Sure it is. We just have to think one step ahead of them. More like five steps or ten. Think about it, Keith. How do you even know I have the journal? How do they even know I have the journal? They have to be watching me. They're probably watching us right now, making notes or any plan we come up with so they can thwart it. Keith glanced over his shoulder. You really think they're watching us? How else would they know? I guess, but aren't there a ton of goblins trolling these grounds? I swear, I've seen two or three skulking in the shadows. Goblin senses can be fooled. They can? Keith asked as Sandor shot her a death look. But it's a secret, not a very well-kept one in Sophie's opinion. Anyway, my point is, 
How are we supposed to sneak up on someone who knows everything we're thinking about doing? Please, if you're talking to a master mischief maker, I'll find the way. You do that. In the meantime, I need to practice flying with Sylvanie. She was only allowed to fly inside the pasture now, and the council was redesigning their plans for Sylvanie's appearance at the festival to make sure there were no more teleporting debacles. Sylvanie was not happy about it and gave the most pathetic sad eyes ever as Sophie made her way to the gate and reached for the cube-shaped padlock to press her thumb against the sensor. The sides of the cube parted to release the lock and a tiny velvet sack fluttered to her feet. A black velvet sack, marked with the now all too familiar symbol. What's that? Keith asked as she bent to pick it up. Proof that we're not alone. Sandor drew his weapon and scanned their surroundings as Sophie untied the beaded threads, knotting the bag, and dumped two items into her palm. A tiny silver alicorn pin with orange topaz eyes and outstretched wings and a note. The black swan had given her pins as clues before, and this one, like the others, looked like it was a prattle's pin. When she flipped it over, she found a tiny digital readout that said, Number one of two. So not only had they snuck into Havenfield, tricked the goblin senses to avoid getting caught, opened the lock that needed her DNA to open, but they'd also managed to get their hands on the rarest prattles pin of them all, all so they could lead her around like the perfect little puppet. Well, they could forget it. She was done being controlled, especially when she saw the message on the note. Face your fears. She started to crumple the paper, but Keith grabbed her wrist and pried it out of her fingers before she could destroy it. He grinned as he read the note. Bring it on. No way, Keith. I'm not playing their games anymore. She was tired of being asked to blindly trust a group who had been manipulating her for years. A group who probably messed something up in her DNA and made her defective. A group who had, may have murdered Jolie. You hear that? She shouted, looking around for some clues as to where they were hiding. She had no doubt they were there. I'm done with the secrets. You want to order me around? You can come out and do it face to face. She held her breath, waiting to see if they would respond. All she heard was the crunching sound of Sylvanie's gobbling down swizzle spice and the chirping of a few crickets. Her hands clenched into fists and her body started to shake as the anger swelled inside her, dimming her vision. Whoa, easy now, Keith said, jerking her shoulder. Calm, Sylvanie added, sending a rush of warmth that melted away the fog. Sorry, she mumbled, staring at her feet. She really needed to get better control of her anger. Keep an eye on, keep an eye on her, Sandor told Keith. I'm going to order the others to do a full sweep of the property. He ran for the trees, and Sophie wanted to tell him not to bother. The black swan were way too smart to even let themselves get caught. And hey, maybe this was good news. It probably meant their mysterious visitor had been from the Black Swan and not the kidnappers. Hey, Captain Moodswing, Keith said, gently grabbing her arm. He sighed when she didn't smile. Look, I get what you're feeling. Shoot, I can feel what you're feeling. And I don't blame you at all. But remember what we're trying to do here. We want to fix Alden, right? The last of her anger cooled as she nodded. Shame swelled in its place. Hey, no feeling guilty either. You have a right to be seriously ticked. And as soon as this is done, you and I are going to put our hands together and figure out how to send the Black Swan a few secret messages of our own, preferably covered in glittery poop. But in the meantime, I think we need to do what they say. Yeah, she mumbled, unclenching her fists and staring at the red dent where the alicorn pin she'd been squeezing had cut into her palm. So, you're the pro at figuring out their clues. Any theories, Keith asked. I'm assuming this has to do with Sylvanie, she said, holding up the pin, especially since they left the clue at her enclosure. And the note? She sighed. No idea. They had to mean her fear, since the message said, face your fears. But what did they think she was afraid of, besides a lifetime of being a useless, malfunctioning creation? She was already facing that. She didn't like doctors, but she faced that fear all the time, too. What else was she afraid of? Her stomach turned sour as an idea hit her. You figured it out, didn't you? She nodded miserably and dug out her imparter. Who are you calling? We're going to need extra help for this part, she said. 
hating that she had to show the, to have to ask this favor. But she had no other choice, so she squared her shoulders and commanded, Show me decks. <laughs>